Greetings Columbus Christian School family and anybody else that might be watching this video as well. I'm coming to you here today in front of our school as we're getting ready to uh, roll out our new return to school plan and I know everybody is anxious to know what the details are on that. Uh, we are so anxious to, for all you students to get back in our building. Our hallways and classrooms have been quiet now for way too long and we can't wait to see your faces in person and to hear the laughter in the classrooms and around the school. So we are planning on returning to school on August the 6th and coming back in and getting things uh, back to normal as possible. We've had a task force that over the last couple of months has been working diligently on following guidelines and mandates and, and uh, we really feel confident that we have a plan put together that is going to uh, keep our students safe, going to keep them healthy and uh, we're, we're going to be able to get back in doing school as we like here at Columbus Christian School. So that plan was uh, put together and was adopted last night. It was voted on at our CCS board meeting and so this morning a couple of things are going to happen. We're doing this video and you're also going to be receiving an email from us with a link to this video but also the plan itself will be in that um, email as well. So be on the lookout for that email. We are coming back on August the 6th. Uh, know and understand that things that we're covering could change as we get new updates and, and new recommendations or mandates. We might have to change some things but we want to give you a feeling uh, this morning in this video of what things might look like and um, how things are going to operate, what you can expect when you return on August the 6th. We're going to pre be prepared for three different learning models. The first learning model would be our normal traditional way of doing classes, doing school. So that would be teacher in the classroom, students in the classroom, face-to-face -face learning, uh, just a traditional learning style. The second one would be what we're calling a hybrid learning model. Um, that would be if our, any of our students need to be home at any point in time, they're going to be, to be able to keep up um, via technology with what's going on in the classroom. That could happen in a couple of different ways. It could be that uh, you as families or students aren't real comfortable yet coming back on August the 6th and you would choose uh, to stay home and do some distance learning. Uh, if that's the case, we want to sit down with you and, and work out a plan of how we can do that and they can, the students can stay up with what's going on in the classroom and we can maintain business as, as usual. Um, and then the third model would be um, what would be the distance learning that we had to go to last spring. You know, we hope that we don't get a mandate where we have to shut down again, but we will be prepared. Uh, our, our staff did an excellent job uh, last spring, but through the process, we've also learned a lot and we think we can even um, do that kind of education e even at a higher level than we did in the past. So again, you'll have the normal traditional learning style, a hybrid learning style, which by the way, the hybrid will, will also be good if someone does get a positive test or has symptoms and has to be at home. It'll be designed that they can keep up with their learning uh, while they might have to be quarantined at home as well. And then also the distance learning model if we have to go to that. I want to talk to you real quickly while we're still outside here about drop off and pick up because it's going to be a little bit different. In the recommendations, it's recommended that we have multiple entry and exit points in the building. So we're going to use our main entrance that we have uh, uh, for the last few years. This will be where the elementary students will enter the school and, and exit later at the end of the day. So this is this is door number one. Elementary students will be dropped off and enter through door number one. Right in the middle of our buildings in the breezeway uh, at door number four, our middle school students are going to enter and exit the building through door number four in the middle of the breezeway. And then the church entrance is door number six. Our high school students will enter and exit through door number six and then we'll be getting information out to you as well about what the pickup is going to look like in the afternoon. It's going to be a little bit different, but again, you will be wanting to utilize and look for these doors. Again, elementary door number one, middle school door number four in the middle, and high school door number six down at the church end. Let's walk inside and talk a little bit about what it's going to look like when we get into our classrooms. As we, uh, as we enter the building, um, at at um, 8 o'clock in the morning after the students have entered the building at 8 o'clock all of the other doors will still be locked and secured so anyone coming to us after 8 o'clock will still need to come through our security doors 
and uh, allow the ladies to hit the button and let you come in and you can check into the office at that point in time. When you get through the security doors and you come in, one of the things we're doing this year that's a little bit different is our students, when they come in, they're going to go directly to their classrooms. They're not going to go into the gym and we're not going to have a big group gathered in the gym uh, in the morning. So teachers will be ready uh, at the 7.30 time period. So when your students come in, they're going to come down and go directly into their classrooms. There'll be one exception to that when I talk about breakfast here in a second. Uh, we'll cover that as well. Some of the differences, some of the things that you're going to see uh, that have changed over the past. We have uh, uh, hand sanitizer stations throughout the building and there, there will also be hand sanitizer um, in each of the classrooms. Within the restrooms themselves, we have gone totally touchless. Uh, so the water faucets in the bathrooms are touchless. Uh, the toilets are touchless. The hand towel dispensers are touchless as well. So uh, we, we think that's gonna help to keep everybody a little bit healthier and safe To uh, Our water fountains, we've gone to the water bottle refills. One of the things we're gonna ask students to do is bring a personal water bottle with them and carry with them throughout the day. And instead of using the normal water fountains, we'll use the water bottle refill. Uh, so that will be pretty much touchless as well. As we come on down uh, to the classrooms, we want to show you a couple of examples. Going to show you an elementary classroom and a middle school classroom. First of all, we'll go into the elementary classroom. What we'd like you to notice in our classrooms is because of our student uh, to teacher uh, ratio, our classrooms remain pretty small, so we are able to maintain the social distancing within the classrooms. Uh, this classroom is set up and pretty much ready to go. You can see the desks are spread out. We even have a little room that we can spread them out uh, even more. But there's plenty of room here for this student and this student to, to be a part. The desks are all facing the same direction, uh, which is one of the guidelines, one of the recommendations as well. Kind of a neat thing we think as our students uh, come on August the 6th, uh, we're gonna be, we're gonna give them some gifts, so little things that we think are kind of neat. We have these individual personalized bottles of hand sanitizer uh, with our Columbus Christian logo. Uh, it's got a clip; they could be put on a, a backpack or or a lunchbox or something. So each student will have a bottle of hand sanitizer. Uh, these can easily be real re refilled uh, with hand sanitizer, so that they can just carry those around with them throughout the year. Uh, I'm going to talk about masks, but one of the things you know, we are going to supply masks. Students are, are welcome to bring their own mask if they have ones that they are comfortable with. Uh, but we're going to supply some masks as well. Have our Columbus Christian logo on it. And, and one of the things that uh, we're going to add to it is they're going to get a lanyard. And if the students have that lanyard on and it's a time that they don't need the mask, they can easily take the mask off, not worry about laying the lanyard or the uh, uh, face covering the mask down and not knowing where it is or losing it later when it's time to put it back on uh, That's an easy fix as well. So while we're talking about that, let me talk about the face coverings for just a second uh, Mask here at Columbus Christian we fall and the, the task force did a great job and fell right in line with what the governor just mandated starting uh, on Monday and that is this we are going to require students and staff to wear masks as they're entering and exiting the building and anytime they're in the hallways going from one part of the building to another part of the building. When we come into the classrooms, because we're able to maintain our three to six foot social distancing in the classrooms, um, the mask in the classrooms will be optional. Students do not have to wear them during instructional time if they uh, choose not to. So let's move over now to the one of the middle school rooms. A big change we have had in our middle school is with the social distancing, we wanted to make sure that our middle school students had this same opportunity in their classrooms. And, and uh, those that have been involved in our middle school in the past have, have known and are, are aware of the fact that uh, they were in some pretty tight rooms on the church end of the building and they were pretty small and it would, it would, it would have been extremely hard to social distance at that point in time. So we have taken a couple of the classrooms that we were utilizing for other areas and made those as uh, middle school classrooms. Uh, we're on the elementary end of the building, but we'll have a sixth grade classroom 
uh, here and a seventh grade classroom there. And uh, if you want to come in real quickly, you can see again, we're social distancing, plenty of space in between. And uh, this is a great opportunity for our middle school students because they now are in a, a room that was uh, uh, made, developed, designed to be a, a normal classroom. So the three classrooms that the middle school will use will be the sixth grade will be in here, seventh grade next door, and our eighth grade will, be, will remain in Mr. Brown's room, which is the old media center um, on the upstairs end of the church. And that will be the only middle school um, grade level that, that will be down on the church end of the building. If we want to step back out here, I'll talk to you just about a couple other things that you'll want to know in the plan. Um, here are some things that you'll want to really take a look at. Will we have breakfast? Yes, we are still going to have breakfast. It'll look a little bit differently because breakfast will be kind of a grab and go. Everything is going to be prepackaged, so students can come pick that up. Um, those students will come get their breakfast and go to an area of the gym, eat their breakfast, and then go to their morning class. Um, breakfast will be served from 7.30 in the morning till 7.50. We want to make sure that they have that 10 minutes to get it, eat it, and still be in class on time at 8 o'clock. So we'll still have breakfast. It will be prepackaged instead of uh, uh, the hot breakfast. At lunch, things will look a little bit different, uh, differently at lunch as well. Here's our feeling on lunch and recess and some things I want to talk about to you real quickly. Students are going to be in the classrooms enough. We need to get them out and moving around and get some fresh air and do some things as well. We're very fortunate here at Columbus Christian that we're small enough that we can do those things and maintain social distancing and, and keep the, the, the students healthy. So at lunch, what's going to happen is a grade level would go down and get their lunch. They'll wear their mask as they go through the lunch line. We're changing some of that routine at lunch. Condiments will all be prepackaged. Um, utensils and napkins will be in a package so people aren't handling different things. Uh, the milk situation, milk has gone inside uh, of the uh, kitchen area so we'll be placing the milk on the tray for the students so that they're all not reaching in that, that um, milk case and things like that. But then they'll go, the elementary students will go into the gymnasium we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to use our regular tables and chairs so that they can be spread out all over the gym. People have plenty of room to eat and maintain that social distancing. We feel we can do the same thing in the fellowship hall for middle school and high school students um, as well. So they will get out of their class. They're not going to eat in the, in the classrooms. We're going to get them out and let them go in the gym and fellowship hall for that. Um, recess. We're still going to have recess. We think that's extremely important as well. So uh, we will rotate classes to be able to go out and have their recess time. Uh, the playground will be cleaned in between uh, those recesses. Our parent-teacher fellowship has graciously volunteered to help us uh, man that and have some volunteers out on the playground to, uh, to both supervise and clean in between the recesses. So if you have an interest in helping with that, uh, get a hold of our parent-teacher fellowship. I know they could uh, uh, use the help and would love for you to help out with that as well. Big thing for us at Columbus Christian School, our chapel services. Been questions about are we going to be able to have chapel, and we are. Um, we're going to run that similar to how the, the churches in our area are doing that now and how we're doing it here at East Columbus Christian Church. Um, we are already, we, we, we took the pews out so there are chairs in there and we can move those chairs and social distance the kids. Uh, we will not be having guest speakers come in for a while and what we're going to do is rotate the chapel speakers among the six ministers that are here within the school and the church and so uh, we're just going to use a rotation with, the, with those ministers to help us with our chapel services at this time. Other assemblies, convocations, those are going to be on hold for a while. We're not going to have those. Um, field trips, uh, the only field trips we will be doing this first semester will be virtual uh, field trips. Uh, extracurriculars, uh, when we were down you might have saw some kids or heard some basketballs. Uh, they happen to be in basketball practice right now. So we still are planning on having our fall sports. Those activities are going to take place. We're still having our drama, we're still having our choir, and many of the other extracurricular activities as well. All of those will be designed and you'll get details on how we can do those and, and kids can still remain um, safe and healthy along the way. 
Um, one other thing, visitors to the building. We're going to limit visitors at the beginning of the school year. We just don't know where everybody's coming in from and who they've been in contact with. Um, so uh, we're going to limit the visitors coming in. When we can lift that restriction, uh, we will have visitors um, go through a quick self-check to make sure that they're healthy before we allow them to come in the building. Uh, that self-check is something we're going to ask your help on. Uh, we're not going to take the students' temperatures as they enter the building. What we're going to ask um, parents and families to do is kind of do a self-check each morning. And in the plan, there's a series of questions that you can ask and check to, to make sure people are feeling well and healthy that morning before they come to school. Uh, so you'll get more explanation on that self-check a little bit later on. Uh, that's a lot of information. There are a lot of things in the plan. I know you're anxious to read it. We encourage you to read the plan. Um, if you have questions, get a hold of us in the office. We're more than happy to answer any questions or make any clarifications on that. And uh, feel free to go to the website. Uh, this will be posted on the website as well. And we are just so looking forward to August 6th uh, rolling around and uh, being able to see all the faces uh, of our students and just see you guys as families again and get back to uh, some uh, uh, normality uh, with things going on. So just remember that uh, God's in control uh, of this whole situation. I think back uh, when I read about in history the, the Spanish flu in, in 17, 18, and 19 and how bad that was and then all of a sudden we had the roaring 20s. And I think God has some big things uh, planned for us again and he asked us not to, to go around living in fear. And so we're going to be safe but we're gonna go ahead and proceed and, and not live in fear and, and get back in here and get back to some biblical worldview uh, education and uh, we just can't wait. Look forward to seeing everybody on August 6th. God bless.